How, how did you get involved in being in stuntman work? It was a childhood dream. Uh -huh. I used to play cowboys and Indians when I was a kid, and my folks moved to California when I was 12. Well, when I left, I put on my six guns and my cowboy hat and my little, uh, uh, buck, not buckskin, but the cowhide vest, you know, that you used to buy when mm -hmm. you was a kid. And all the way out to California, boy, I was shooting them up in the back seat of my car or my dad's car, uh -huh. you know. Well, when I got out there, I, uh, of course, I, I quickly realized that it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. There was a television series at that time called The Range Rider with Jock Mahoney and Dick Jones. And uh, I thought I would be a pretty good double for Dick West, Dick Jones. His West was his character name. So I wrote Flying A Productions, which is Gene Autry's deal, and I offered to be his, you know, Dick's stunt double. Well, I found out years later that Dick was as handy as any stuntman in Hollywood. I mean, he was a heck of a horseman and could do fights like crazy. So I never got any answers back. I think I wrote three letters, and I never got any answers back. And then I was... I think I wrote the last one when I was 14. Uh, I quit school early, which was a stupid mistake. And in 1956, well, in 1954, I went to, uh, when I was 14, I went to a place called Corrigan Now, uh, you probably never heard of Ray Crash Corrigan. He's an old-time movie star, mm -hmm. westerns. And uh, he starred as Flash Gordon in, in a lot of early movies. Well, he first bought some property in Simi Valley. And he started leasing that out or renting it to the various studios for the Westons. Well, he thought, when he heard them talking about a town, that they would have to go to the studio to, to shoot the town. He thought, hmm. So he built a town out there. He called it Silvertown. And studios rented it like crazy. Well, then he thought, well, I'll, I'll, they don't use it on a weekend, so I'll open it up to the public. And he did. And then he had to hire kids, like me, to, uh, to work doing the the shows, book gunfight at the OK Corral and all that. That was 1954. I went and I saw this ranch and I thought, someday. Well, I came back in 1956 with my fiance, and as we were leaving, she said, why don't you go ask the guy down there for a job? So I did, and I got a job there. For three weeks of chasing back and forth, 55 miles one way, 110 miles a week a day, uh, both Saturday and Sunday, and then finally on the third weekend, the guy said, Boy, you're a persistent little, <clears throat> aren't you? And I said, yeah. He said, okay, you come back and you... Anyway, I got a job there. Through that, I met a guy, Bill Ward, who got me into the Screen Actors Guild in 1960 with Ballad of a Gunfighter. That's actually the year we made that, was in 1960. And uh, that got me in the Screen Actors Guild, so once you got in there, it made it a lot easier, because without the card, you couldn't work. And without the work, I mean, uh, you know, you couldn't, you know... Anyway, one you had to both, have both, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, so I just started working. I worked as an extra for a while in the back, background, and every chance I got, I'd get into doing a stunt. And finally, it clicked, and I met Walt, and it just well, sailed off. Well, did, were you always athletic? Did you have to be pretty athletic to do that. No, that's. The did you ride horses as a kid and stuff? I rode a pony at a at a children's home. That was it. When I first came to California, my dad took us to a place where they gave you a length of rubber hose like this to beat the horse with to make him go. Other than that, I, I had no horse experience. But while I was learning the craft of stunt guys, because I, I had a lot of guys help me, you know, I'd learn something from you and him and some. And uh, we used to go to a, a Randall's Ranch and the stunt guys who wanted to stay in shape. And we'd go there and ride horses. They kept their horses in shape because they rented all their horses to the studios for the cast, crew, you know, not crew, but extras and everybody else. So they needed riding, so we, we got practice doing that. And uh, we always tried to stay in shape, scuba diving, mountain climbing, I mean, rappelling, doing all that kind of stuff. We practiced fights, we practiced car stuff, motorcycles, and... Uh, that's why I got hurt the most was on the weekends doing, doing that. Well, when you were working at Silver City, did you do have to like fall off balconies and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. So you, you, that's how you got your practical training for. Yeah, the only difference was we didn't do a fight like they do it in the movies. What we did is you throw a punch and you'd hit the guy in the shoulder, uh -huh. and boom, and it would look like you got hit, and you got a sound effect at the same time, and uh -huh. the crowd loved it. But you know. your shoulder got sore probably. No, no. But. <laughs> Yeah, I got the basics, the very basics. Mm -hmm. And then as I progressed along, I learned from, like I say, other people. Every day at lunchtime, 
that I can remember, because I wasn't on the set every day, but almost every day, he would hurry up and eat his lunch, if he ate lunch, and then he'd bring his guitar up. And he sang every song that he ever wrote, and that, that he knew practically over the three weeks that we shot that thing. Which show was this? Ballad of a Gunfighter. Oh, okay. Because Marty had done a lot of uh, parts in different movies, little parts, but he'd never starred in one until Ballad of a Gunfighter. Is that your, is that that's early in your career, isn't that it? That was when I got into the Screen Actors Guild through that one. 1960. 1960. What, what did you do in that film? I was one of the bad guys, did the chasing him around when, when you know when he was playing the bad guy on a white horse. And actually, I met Walt. We were doing a uh, a lead-in to Willie the Yank, which Kurt was star of, but I didn't meet him. I only met Walt. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Walt Disney, Mr. Disney, and, and he took a liking to me, and, and he kept me around there for 10 years after he passed away. You know, He put me on a list somewhere. What would you say was your big break? How did you get established as kind of a mainstream stuntman? Following Kurt. See, Kurt's dad, I started doubling, uh, doubling him, like I say, on computer work tennis shoes, and as things went along, by the time I did the third movie with him, his father approached him and said, you know, when we're at home watching your movies, we can't tell whether it's you or Dick. So why don't you put him in your contract as your stunt double? So when you do a movie, they have to hire him. He said, Dad, I don't know anything about that stuff. And so Bing, who was the deputy sheriff on Bonanza, he's a good actor. He said, I'll take care of it. Next thing you know, when they hire him, they call me. How many movies did you do with him? Well, I don't know. I went from computer wore tennis shoes to tango and cash. And then I got too heavy because uh -huh. I quit smoking and uh, put on about 12, 14 pounds. <laughs> and he was... Still 165 or something, and I was 80, almost 90 pounds. I was 90 pounds. But that, gosh, that's like a 20, 25 year run, ain't it? It was 25 years. I, I enjoyed working with Kurt. He was such a pleasure. He, there isn't anything that I did for him that he couldn't do and do better. He's that handy as a, as a physical person. You know, he's a he's much more physical guy than I am. And. Uh, uh, so he was like a Triple A baseball player, wasn't he? Yes, his dad owned the team. Yeah. Yeah, Portland or somewhere yeah. up in Oregon or Washington. Yeah, and and he threw his shoulder out. Otherwise, he'd have been a professional ball player, and I don't know who I'd have been doubling Tim Conway, maybe. <laughs> I did double Tim, but... <laughs> when he left the, the the kid roles and went into the adult roles, he kind of hit the sci-fi horror. Escape from New York is where I met John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. And after we finished Escape, they asked me to do Halloween 2. And that started that. You know, then it, then it was Pumpkinhead with, with Stan Winston, and it was The Thing, and it was Halloween 3, and it was the Jason, you know, Friday the 5, and... and Firestarter? Yeah, Firestarter. And there's some that border on that horror genre, but, you know, they're also uh, fall into another categories, but... Sci-fi, horror, thriller type yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Action. Actually, yeah. Just your resume, and it's just classic movie after classic movie after classic movie. Uh, Jaws, what did you do in Jaws? Well, I doubled Richard Dreyfuss as Hooper in the, in the cage with the shark. What was that like? Well, that, that was interesting because uh, I lost the regulator the first time the shark hit the cage. I mean, it knocked that thing up almost horizontal when it hit him. Boom! I'm, I'm struggling to get my regulator back. I'm doing this finally, and I uh, finally got it. I got it put it back in my mouth, and, and Spielberg didn't know. The only guy who might have figured it out, and he didn't tell me, was Freddy Zendar. He was the stunt coordinator. I, I don't. I never said anything to anybody. He just went right on. We spent a week shooting that stuff, and you know what is it on screen? Thirty seconds. Yeah. Uh, nineteen forty-one with John Belushi. Yeah, I, I didn't do a lot in nineteen forty-one. It was a scene where the plane crashed into the street, uh -huh. and he staggered out and fell off, <laughs> fell off the wing. We were just people there when the plane came down. Oh, okay. There's a lot of those things, like Spider-Man was the last movie I did. <clears throat> I was one of forty-two gray-headed guys. And that's why I got the job, because of the gray hair, that was on the balcony when the goblin throws the bomb and the, and the thing coll you know, the collapses. I was running around there ducking fire and oh. bricks. Is there actually stuff falling on here, or was it all, like, digital? No, no, it's stuff, it stuff falling, but it's foam. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> Blazing Saddles, that's one of the all-time classics. Boy, Blazing Saddles, yeah. It started on the street. I mean, it was a big fight that went all the way through. The now, were you a cowboy or were you one of the chorus line guys? No, the chorus line guys were kind of the chorus line guys, and I wasn't one of them. Most of them were stunt guys anyway, but yeah. 
But uh, no, I was a cowboy. You were in a couple of uh, several uh, Mel Brooks movies. How did you yeah. end up get being a Mel Brooks guy? Somebody just hired me on one of them, and then, then when when uh, uh, what was it? Spaceballs came along. Somebody gave me a phone call. I went in for an interview and talked with him, and he said, "Yeah, okay." He never hired the same stunt coordinator twice. It was always somebody different. So I got the job on that one. And you were in Silent Movie, Men in Tights, uh, Spaceballs, Blazing Saddles. Yeah, there was one more. I keep thinking there was one more, but maybe not. What, what did you do in Spaceballs? Uh, well, I was the stunt coordinator, and I was the uh, Vulcan pinch guy. The, the, the guy in the helmet, he comes up and does this. I said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> he said, the Vulcan pinch. I said, no, you idiot. It says down here where the neck meets the shoulder. He says, like this? Yeah. Yeah. And I fall down. And I had to talk Mel into let me do that. He said, no, no, no. And you, you fall on your head. You know? And I said, please, let me let me at least show you. You know? So finally, after I berated him a little bit, he, he said, okay. So he let me do it. And what, the next day in dailies after we did that? I was the only one that got a laugh bigger than anything, anybody else. And he was a little bit, <clears throat> a little, little stuffy about it. Uh -huh. He should have fired me on that show, by the way. Why? Because I, you know what a line reading is? That's where you, you tell the actor how you want him to say the line. Mm -hmm. I'm standing back watching the scene where they've got the princess in the back of the motorhome and they're cruising through space and, and the tail's wagging on, on what's his name? Uh, John, John Candy. Candy's dog. <laughs> anyway, uh, he's delivering a line. It's like, uh, well, she doesn't look Druish, that line there. And the way he was saying it, Mel was as far away as that cable over there watching it on a TV and he's going, oh. and like he didn't like it, right? And I didn't like it either. I thought it was stupid the way he said it. I walked over to the motorhome and I started up the steps into the set. And I said, Mel, I'll, I'll tell him what... Oh, oh, he started screaming. No, you... And he came over and just ate me up one side and down the other. And I really thought he should have fired me. <laughs> but he didn't. About 20 minutes later, there was nobody around. He called me over and he said, listen, he said, I, I, I can't let you do that because and then the electricians and... You know, the carpenters and everybody, they'll want to direct a movie, and I'm the only director. Mm -hmm. I said, I understand. I said, I'll go. You know, think I should be fired? No, no, no. I don't know. We'll just forget it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, he was real nice about it. <laughs> is there one role that you did that is your favorite? What's your favorite role? <laughs> well, I haven't done that many roles, but I'd say Michael Myers and yeah. Halloween. After I came off of Escape from New York, uh, Deborah Hill called me. She was John Carpenter's cohort in writing and producing and stuff. She called and asked me if I wanted to be the stunt coordinator. And I said, sure. And she said, come in and, and meet the director. You have to meet the director. I said, fine. So I went in. Well, it turns out it was the director's first movie. Uh, and I went into his office with the mask and stood in the doorway. I put the mask on because I found it in, as I walked down the hallway to his office, it was on a desk. And I, went put it, and I stood there and looked at him. He said, who are you? I didn't answer. He said, who the H-E double hockey sticks are you, see? And I took it off and I was laughing. And I said, I'm Dick Warlock and I'm supposed to meet you for the job as stunt coordinator. And he said, oh, okay. So we had our little chit-chat. And as I was leaving, I said, is there any reason I can't play this guy? And he said, no, I don't care. Deborah doesn't care. Mm -hmm. So I went to her office and she said, fine. So that's how I got that. How do you prepare for the role of, of Michael Myers? Well, I had never seen the original Halloween. So I went and rented it, and I, 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 I couldn't get a handle on it until there was a scene where he's been stabbed in the eyes as he breaks through the closet, and she's on the floor, and she sticks him with a coat hanger, and he falls down. Then she goes and sits down in the doorway, and in the background, you see him raise up and turn, and it was real mechanical, and I'm like, ooh, and they had it right to the beat of the music, and then he gets up and goes, and, you know, the mask comes off, and... Uh, so I thought, that's what I'm going to do. So I played it like that, and uh, th I did a commentary on a new Blu-ray that's coming out, Halloween 2, the you know, Blu-ray, and I heard the director, Ro Rick Rosenthal, who I haven't talked, well, a couple times I talked to him after we finished that movie. He invited me to do another movie with him, and I couldn't. Uh, but he was very complimentary about the walk. He said, the way he glides along, he said, I really like that. Well, I, I, I like that. I mean, that was, that was a great compliment. Uh, people have... 
They always comment on the walk. Everybody that's ever talked to me, boy, the way you walk, that was cool. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy with that, but nobody ever directed me to do it. Deborah, who in one of the releases of, of one of the, the, you know, the versions where she had, she spoke at the end, uh, she said, well, Dick never did get the walk, you know. Well, she got a lot of backlash from that. And I said, well, why didn't she tell me she was on the set every day? But anyway. Did that, you think that movie is cool, which will be remembered for the most? Yeah, I'd say so, because that's the one that gets me invited to the conventions. It's not Jaws, it's not Pumpkinhead, it's not Blazing Saddles, you know. Well, you had more like a, anonymous background characters. This is the one time you were really up yeah. front yeah. In, 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 the, in the movie. Well, I was featured quite a bit in, in uh, Halloween 3 as mm -hmm. an assassin, you know, but that didn't... People didn't like that movie. It wasn't know? Halloween. It was, didn't have it was a completely different movie. They didn't know, I don't think, at that point that they made Halloween 3, that Michael Myers was the guy that everybody wanted to see. It wasn't Jamie. It, you know, it was it was Myers. Mm -hmm. I think they realized that later on. Mm -hmm. So they did. That's the reason they... Deborah, when I said, can I have the mask? As them? She said, yeah, I take it. We'll never do another movie with that guy. So I had the mask, the coveralls, the boots, the L rod knife, the scalpel. I had the whole Magella. Now, what did you do with all that stuff? I sold it to a friend of mine. He has two haunted houses, one in Toledo, Ohio, and one in Tiffin, Ohio. And I haven't talked to him in a long time, but he used to alternate it. One year he'd show it in Toledo, and next year it was Tiffin, and back and forth, so that the fans had a chance to uh, get a look at the real thing. You know. Did you regret selling it later? Or? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you, especially like when you retire and you hit the the convention circuit, that'd be a nice thing to bring with you, wouldn't exactly. it? Exactly. So what were your favorite movies to work on? Oh God! I, didn't, I would say everything I did at Disney, everything I did at Disney. The horror films are fun. I, I felt like I was getting stuck in a pigeonhole. Uh, it made me good money. I mean, shoot, I, you know, I made a good living doing it. Uh, but there are other things I would rather have done. Uh, I, you know, one of my favorite shows was Cold Check. Cold Check. What did you do on Cold Check? I did a part on Cold Check, the Night Stalker. W yeah. Were you a, a, a monster? No, I was a cop. I was oh. a cop, and I came in and arrested him. He's he's given some people some dialogue. And it's called Dracula. No, not Dracula. Uh, oh, who was who was the guy that killed the ladies in in uh, in London? Oh, the Jack the Ripper. Yeah, it's the Ripper show. Okay. Emergency was a TV show. Yeah, I did. A, I probably did a dozen and a half of those shows. Yeah. As the victim, always the victim, you know. You weren't one of those guys that had a heart attack or something, like, were you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> heart attack. I had stuff fall on me. I was in water drowning. I, was, I mean, I did it all, you know. <laughs> there was just a handful of us guys that, that the director used to hire over and over again. Huh. Uh, George Fennedy was the director that always hired Larry Holt, myself, and sometimes Warren James. Everybody loves Bronson. What did you do in Mr. Majestic? Mr. Majestic. Uh, Bronson's a strange dude. I've met some strange dudes in this movie. <laughs> but I was uh, involved in a lot of the car stuff, chasing around in the bus when the bus was, uh, mm. you know, we were up in, in uh, what's the name of that little town in Colorado. Anyway, we were all over Colorado. And uh, I was just one of the ND stunt guys that was up mm. there. What, when you say he's a strange dude, what did he do? That was well, you know, there were... It, there are some guys that are just really friendly, mm -hmm. you know, they, how you doing, Dick? I haven't seen you for a while, what have you been up to, you know, and having coffee, and they sit, they have chairs around where the actors sit in, you know, and, and you sit down with them and chit-chat, and some of them are just very <coughs> aloof, ah, I might say. Okay, you know? not a people person. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, they treat you like, uh you know, Buddy Hackett. I had an incident with Buddy Hackett. He's a comedian. I know who Buddy Hackett is. Do you? Yeah, I, I watched a lot of TV when I was a kid. I don't know whether the audience <laughs> would know who he is, but I had a run in with him on a on the original Love Bug at Disney. He thought I was going to be as funky and carry his chair and his coffee, and I said, "Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Hackett. When I see your name down on the bottom of my check, I'll start being your funky. Until that time, you carry your own chair." And he <laughs> handed out five wristwatches that had Chinese letters because he, he had did a Chinese routine that he was famous for. Chinese letter and his name down it, Buddy Hackett. He gave one to the producer, the director, Dean Jones, David Tomlinson, and me. Really? So, Why? Because you stood up to him? I guess so. And uh, one of my all-time favorite movies, Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. Oh, yeah. That was we shot that in Stockton, California. That's, 
That was wild. Were you driving in that one? Yeah, it was a cop. Oh yeah, you were. You had an acting part in that. Yeah, yeah. Now you're not the, one of the guys. The guy that crashes the. Are you? Yeah. You crashed. Yeah. <laughs> Turn around backwards into a field. Six million dollar man. Six million dollar man. I did probably a half a dozen of those. The most, the most enjoyment I had out of out of all of them. I'm an Elvis Presley fan, right? Well, Elvis had died by this time, and. Uh, I got to snuggle up with his wife, Priscilla. Oh, as an act, in an, in no, 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 just just standing around chatting. Aha, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> I got a picture of Miss Presley and myself. Ah, uh, <laughs> another classic, Rollerball. Rollerball, James Caan. Yeah. I got knocked out for three days on that movie. Knocked unconscious. Knocked unconscious. How did you do that? Well, it was lunchtime. <clears throat> well, it's either the weekend or lunchtime I get hurt. I'm skating around backwards, just cruising, no helmet, no pads, just cruising around. Practicing? You know? Well, Wait. just having fun, yeah. skating backwards. And one of the guys was laying on the track, and when I skated by, he raised his knee up, caught oh. me, and down I went, right, bam, in oh. my head. And, wow, that hurt. I went over and laid down on a stretcher, or a gurney, and went to sleep. And I woke up three days later in the hospital. Did you miss out on being in any of the film? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, oh, the whole sequence with the team, that was, I can't remember which, uh, I know what it is, I can't, they were in the purple outfits, mm -hmm. you know. Were you one of those guys, you were one of the purple guys? Well, no, I was supposed to be doubling one of the actors that was the purple guy, mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't get to do that. But I, I was on the blue team, I was, you know, I was number three, ride a motorcycle in the New York team, and the only team I wasn't on was that purple team. And uh, the uh, Houston. I wasn't on Houston. You weren't on the like the Stars team. No. The James Conn's team. No. Okay. That's that's pretty neat. Because though. I was a roller skater and, not, and none of the other stunt guys were. I ended up teaching a lot of them, and then uh, uh, that's why I was up against Conn's team all the time. Well, you, you did several uh, Stephen King movies. Did you get to meet Stephen King? No. 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 You know, once in a while they show up, but they never showed up when I was there. Oh. Firestarter was was an interesting movie. It, you know, it was it was fun to shoot. We, those fire burns were exciting. Did, who did, what did you do in that movie? Well, I was I played a part of a, a character named uh, Ray Knoll. There's two Stenowitz and Moles, are, are two smaller characters, you know. But uh, I was throughout the movie and died in the end, running away from the fire. She's shooting those balls of fire people, and I got I got hit, and went up in flames, and. <laughs> Up to that time, the, the fire burn I did at the end of Halloween 2 was the biggest fire burn that had been done. I was laying home in bed, and Jim Martell was the casting director at Warner Brothers. And one morning he called me, and he said, Dick, I needed you yesterday. Get here as quick as you can. I said, yeah, so I got dressed. Now we live about three miles from the studio. So I get to, the, get to his office, and I walk in, and he's got me. Go outside, the director's or the assistant's waiting for you. So I went out, and the assistant director was there. He said, are you Dick Law? I said, yeah. He said, follow me. So we went over to the hair and makeup and wardrobe. They, they put me in, a, in you know, that, that camouflage or that, that uniform. I, I didn't know what was going on. I never connected with Green Beret. Then they cut one side of my hair to put the beret on, and they trimmed the other side. They didn't even have time to cut the whole thing, so they did that. And he said, he said, come on. And I went over to the uh, sound stage. We walk in, he, and on the way in, he says, the Duke wants to meet you. I didn't, it just didn't click, the Duke. We walk up to the table, and there's John Wayne and Bruce Cabot and Richard Blue and uh, Aldo Ray, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, you know. And uh, so he pulls out a piece of paper. He writes down some words on it. He hands it to me, and he says, here, kid. He said, you got till right after lunch. He said, you got plenty of time to learn this. And it wasn't that much. So I said, okay. So after lunch, we come back. <clears throat> and I've got my paper in my pocket. And he says, uh, uh, come here, kid. And I walked over there. He said, let me, let me hear the words. So, so I spotted them off to him. And he said, that's not what I told you to say. And I said, yes, it is. He said, no, it isn't. I pulled the paper down. I handed it to him. I said, yes, it is. And he read it. He watered up, threw it down. He said, that's not what I want you to say. And he wrote some <laughs> to, to what I did say. And so uh, he said, "You got five minutes." Well, now I'm I'm scared anyway because this is John Wayne and it's a speaking part, and you know I'm not an actor. I'm a guy that falls down and make a living. So I went behind the set and I was getting. So I got my dialogue out, 
went over and did it for him. He said, fine, that's good. So Aldo Ray and I walk up to the top of the steps, and we got to walk in and come down through these people and walk up to the table and deliver the dialogue. Well, while we're up there, Aldo gets in my face. Who the... I mean, he really got nasty with me. Who are you and what the heck are you doing with my dialogue? And I, I said, don't, hey, don't get on me, man. I said, I didn't even know about this until probably an hour ago. And, and now I'm, you know, here doing it. So don't blame me. We came down and we did it. But I, I didn't like the idea that he got in my face like that, you know, because it wasn't me that, that, that did the whole thing. I was the recipient of his anger. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we got through it. I blew it the first time. Wayne blew it the second time. And I'm going, oh, we've got to get it this next time. So we got it the third time and everything was fine. But why, why were you needed, though, on such short notice? Because he'd been drinking, Aldo Ray had been drinking, and Wayne was fed up to hear with... He couldn't get his line straight? I don't know what all the problem was, but it was consistent throughout the filming. Uh -huh. he, he, you know, yeah. he tended to drink too much anyway. Can yeah. you think of any other huge, colossal stars that, that you bumped elbows with during your career? Well, uh, Clint Eastwood. Deadpool? Robert, Robert De Niro, yeah. Robert De Niro. Uh, Deadpool was just a, a two days up, or one day up, two days there and back again. I, it, so many of the credits that you see, they're not six-month movies, you know. They're, they're a day or two here, a week there, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Did you meet uh, Clint Eastwood? Uh, got, got a call to go to San Francisco. I didn't even know it was a Dirty Harry movie. <laughs> I just went up. Well, a lot of times we don't know what, what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. and so what, what did you do in that movie? Uh, I was in a, in a scene involving fire with him, and he signed a picture where he said, Thanks for the for taking care of me or something like that. I didn't remember exactly what I meant. Well, I got a call from a friend of mine to go up to come up to Las Vegas. Uh, they're doing a, doing a film up there, and he wants me to come up for a week because I'm going to do a little part. I said, okay. So I went up and, uh, and met De Niro and and uh, what's the director? Sport Martin Scorsese and and you know other people and I'm hanging around hanging around finally he gets around to my my deal where I go up and and he tells me what he wants me to do and I don't say anything I just walk over I got a cattle prod up my sleeve and this big cowboy's been cheap so I just slip that thing out and zap him right he does the funky chicken and hits the floor and a week a week to shoot that that, I love this picture. I love this picture. I was born lazy. and uh, I mean, just, <laughs> But while I was there, the, com the, the comic thing named... Uh, Don Rickles. Don Rickles. I'm in, the, I'm in the makeup chair, sitting in the makeup room, and in comes Rickles. Now, he and I are the only two there. I'm waiting for the lady to come in to do whatever she's going to do. So we start talking. We must have talked 15, 20 minutes. And he's not the Don Rickles that you see. You know, it's like watching the guy on a debate the other night who showed up that the other guy didn't know he was coming. <laughs> he plays like an assistant manager at the casino. Yeah. Uh, so did you have any encounters with De Niro? Just that one. Just to meet him. De Niro is just, I mean, I mentioned him when I was talking about uh, Charlie Bronson. He was the same way on Midnight Run. I got my picture taken with him and him and Groden, you know, like we're buddies. You know, neither one of them is real friendly. Yeah. I mean, well, who are we? I mean, De Niro hangs out with Scorsese. You know, they do that white stuff. Oh. Yeah. Uh, what, what did you do on The Abyss? I was the stunt coordinator. Yeah? Yeah, and I played the part of Perry. I die early when the deep core starts going down and the, the things flood. <clears throat> In the long version, not the TV, but the long version, the little geek is looking around and he's finding different people. When he finds me dead under my cot. Just laying in 40 feet of water. Was that a, was that a fun movie to do? A lot of un I guess you're not underwater a lot, are you? It was more fun with my now wife uh, but, than I had on the movie. No, I, didn't <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't like James Cameron. Oh, really? No, I don't like James Cameron. He's, I, I, I wrote him a letter after the movie was over because I, I quit, basically. They came back to L.A. to do that ending with the plastic thing and it <laughs> looked like junk. The thing that well, comes out of the ocean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, see, they had run out of money by that time, and that's why it looked the way it did. It was, it was terrible. Uh, but I wrote him a letter and said, you know, next to Steven Spielberg, you're probably the brightest guy I've ever met in this business. So I said, please, don't ask me to work for you again, because I respectfully decline. Yeah. Why? He's got a personality bigger than Texas. Oh. I mean, uh, an ego, and not a personality, an ego. That, to me, I just, he was hard to communicate with. 
if it's not his way, it's the highway. He just, uh, mm. it was not fun being around him or working with him. Mm. Well, he's made some big movies, though, oh, hasn't he? Oh, you bet he has. <laughs> you bet he has. And had I sucked up, I'd have probably been along with him. Yeah. I don't know. But what about Scorsese? Was he, how was he to work with? He, he didn't say a word to me. Yeah. Did, other than you know your you know your part, I said yeah. And he said just walk up and the girl will tell you what to do. Yeah, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Yeah, he's that's the bicycle movie. Yeah. Okay. What did you what did you do on I that? I had a little story about that one. I had quit smoking two weeks. I mean two years before I did that movie. So I get a call. I'm going to do the cab driver part. So I light up the cigarette. He said you got to smoke. Okay. So I light up this Marlboro. <laughs> Because you're smoking, your character smokes. Yeah, but I wasn't smoking. I wasn't. <laughs> he walks over to the car and he leans down on the window and he says, You know, I can see what you're doing. I said, What do you mean? He said, With the, You're smoking like a woman. What is this? You sissy? No, no. I, I quit smoking two years ago and I really don't want to get the habit back. He said, You took the movie, didn't you? And I said, Yeah. He said, Then smoke. Who told you this? The director. Oh. Who, whose name I. <laughs> it escapes me now. And I, okay, so for a week, every day, I smoked all day long. Oh, man. And what really aggravates me, if you ever see the movie, you never see me inhale. Oh, boy. So I did all that for nothing. But the Lord blessed me, so I never got the habit back. Okay. Did you like acting better or stunt, stunt work better? I, I, I suck at acting. I, I would love to have been an actor. My son's an actor, uh, one of them. But I, I'm not that good. Uh, I have stage fright. So when it comes to a lot of dialogue, I tend to freeze up. Uh, thanks to my friend Charlie Aldrich, I got that at a place called Corrigan years ago. I mentioned that. Uh, he made me get up on, on stage and sing Hound Dog. And I got out of meter with the band, and it was people laughed. I went out and puked, and I mean, it was terrible. <laughs> what did you do on the relic? Uh, you remember when the helicopters flew in with the, with the guys on board? At the very end, when they when they uh, roped down into the right. hole. Yeah. Well, I was the first guy, uh, first guy that roped down into the hole. So you I get was eaten. The guy that the relic attacked and took to the floor and ripped his head off. You, well, you just come in and you're like a hired gun. You come in and do a quick scene and you're gone. Yeah. How long did it take to shoot that? We were there. I think five days. We were we were there. Huh. Was and that was that. You know, you have, the, you have different setups. I was also involved in in arriving at the uh, museum. Slid a car in, you know, police car. There was cars all over the place, mm -hmm. so I did that. And kind of the, the ending one yeah. uh, t towards the end there. Yeah. A lot of people have seen 28 Days. I don't remember any stunts on that one. You know? Falling out the window, maybe. I don't either. But I, I got a call. Again, it was a friend. It was like the job on, on uh, Spider-Man. It was a buddy thing. He called and said, hey, I need great guys. You're interested in working? He said, I know you haven't worked for a long time. You want to come? So I left Kingsport and went out there and did that. 28 days were shot in Nashville. <clears throat> that that part that I, what did I do? Mama, who is who is uh, what's her name? The actress. Sandra Bullock. Yes, yeah, Sandra Bullock. Well, Sandra Bullock uh, had to put her child on a coffee table upside down and let her go down the driveway on the snow. Right. Well, then a car goes by and near miss with the child coming oh that's me. like a flashback scene yeah flashback scene yeah. okay well, he called me because he wanted me to drive drive the car by. okay so <laughs> there again in one day and out the next they want to make sure the kid didn't get run over exactly. i guess <laughs> what did you do on married oh, with John, children i did the one about the about the tornado i go flying by the window reading the newspaper two two fights in the in the booby bar, he called it something else, but you know. Yeah. Uh, one time, David uh, Naut uh, uh, not Naughton, David. Anyway, the young boy, David, he hits me over the head with a beer bottle, and I, I, I mean, those bar fights that they mm -hmm. used to have. There. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> that sounds like fun. I did, I think, six of those episodes. Child's Play. Were you in all three? I see you're in. No, the I was in the second two. And it, okay. It was again. I was a stunt coordinator. I doubled a cop in a police car. Uh, at one time, I doubled the, the lead girl who had to spin out in the uh, little station wagon. And I, you know, you just and they took care of the kids. And oh, another one of my all-time favorites, Inner Space. Uh, you know, I just did a car chase. I was involved in a car chase. One of the ND cars that had to get out of the way as the chase was going, OP. And Fletch, that's another classic. Yeah, I turned a car over in Fletch. Fletch. Okay. 
Um, I've, I've, I worked in two of them, Fletch uh, and Fletch Two, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I rode a motorcycle in one of them. What about um, Body Double? There's another great, great movie. Well, we we had a <laughs> in California in San Fernando Valley. There's a a wide. It's about as wide as that concrete. I would say 12 feet wide. And it goes up a hill, and water comes from the California aqueduct over that and down the, in a slough, I think. You know, I had to fall into that for I can't, I can't even remember the actor's name. Some blonde kid. I fell into the fell into the water going him. Craig Watson. Yeah, and I did a movie with with Robert Wagner uh, over in in Hawaii called Pearl 41, but now it's called Pearl, or there's two other titles for it, and it's been on TV a couple of times. It's about World War, you know, World War II in Pearl Harbor, where I double credit again. I uh. had to dive off a boat going out after the the jet. I mean, the airplanes had gone through and bombed everything, and they're gone. And now we're going out to see who's left. And I dive off the the boat into the water, which is on fire. And I'd always been told that if you put a hole in the water, and the special effects guy even told me that, put a hole in the, take a breath, go down, and finish your swim. Well, I had to swim. Halfway up that hill, mm -hmm. which is a long way. Yeah. Uh, 40 yards or 50 yards. Yeah. Long. So I dive in the water and I'm going along and I can see the flames. And I'm going along. And I'm, I'm looking for my breath now. I go up. There's no air. No. The fire has it's sucked all the air out of it. All the oxygen out. I'm going. Oh, man. And I went down and, and I just barely got to the ladder on the side of the ship. I mean, it was. There have been a couple like that. I was in a helicopter, hanging on a helicopter strut, and, uh, uh, well, it's, uh, that's another story. Well, Ghost Story, that was another Craig Wasson movie. Yes, I fell through a staircase for him. He's oh. going in the haunted house, and he falls through the staircase. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. All and right. I also double spread a stair on that movie. Well, why, why did you retire? Physically. Yeah. Physically, I couldn't. I got to where it was too much. Do you ever get calls anymore to work? No. 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 I just do those conventions, sit around yeah. and meet the guys. They're all has beens that come to the convention, you know. <laughs> I mean, right. Are there stunt, stuntmen groupies and fan clubs? Well, not stuntmen. Mm -hmm. I mean, they come because of Michael Myers, ah. or they come because of Jason, or they come because of the Hulk. You know, the, they don't. Lou Ferrigno. I mean, everybody. Linda Blair comes and tries to turn her head around from you know spit pea soup right. the exorcist and stuff how, how many of those do you do a year would you say I'm very choosy I do two maybe three count my haunted house mm -hmm. I don't like I said about coming to the barn if I came to the barn every week pretty soon it'd be oh I got your stuff last year yeah you know you just don't want to do that because the reason they have people like me come is to draw new people and and that's that's the object. And if you're not drawing any people, then it's not worth me coming. Right. Working with, with Kurt Russell all those years, uh, he, he was a treat to be around. Just one heck of a nice guy, as was Dean Jones. Uh, there's a number of them out there that I could, I could names I could run by you, but uh, those people really stand out in my mind uh, as people that were, were a joy to work with. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know. I worked on two films with him, and... Uh, I really thought he would be a, a good governor, and really I don't know what kind of a governor, governor he ended up being because he's a people guy. Everybody was on the same level. He didn't care whether you were the guy that was pounding nails or whether you were the star wa working next to him. Everybody was equal, and he was he was fun to be around. You know, He would invite the stunt guys or the extras or whoever into his dressing room and yak with them in between setups. And, so that was a treat. I've enjoyed the business. God has been good to me. I've been I've been blessed abundantly, and I thank Him for that. Do you ever flip like channel surf and say, "Oh, there's me"? No. No. <laughs> I've got movies that that I, people have given me, and they're still in the wrappers. Mm -hmm. Things I've done. You haven't seen the movies that you've done? Some of them. What? But but if a guy would, if you would give me a a, a copy of some movie that I hadn't seen. Mm -hmm. It'd probably still be in the wrap. Is there a movie that you have done that you can watch over and over? Mm, no. No. I enjoy Jaws because it's it's really even though I know all about it, it's suspenseful. Mm hmm. Yeah. No. No. 
If uh, aside from Michael Myers, uh, if if there was one movie that you'd want to be remembered for, what would that be? Hell, I don't know. No, no, <laughs> no, no. I, I I don't. You know, people ask me, what, what what was it like doing Halloween, and did you enjoy doing this and that? To be perfectly honest, at that time in my life, it was a job that fed my family. I, I had no idea about the cult following until years later. I was on a Married with Children, and uh, the fellow, Don Shanks, who had done part five, part four, part five, he said, why don't you do the conventions? And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. And he explained it to me, and, and I don't know, a year later, I got a hold of somebody and started doing them, but I just never knew about all that. and. and like I say, it was a way of feeding my family. Well, you've got one minute left. What, what would you like to say? What, what, what can you say in one minute about your life? In about film? Life? Your well, life in general. I don't know. Well, I, well, I, I remember how I quit smoking. <laughs> I, was, I was down at Santa Monica Pier with my, my uh, fiance and with another couple. We were on our way home, and uh, a voice spoke to me. Jesus can't live in there. And I took my cigarettes out and looked at them, and it repeated itself. I never heard that voice before or since. And I watered those cigarettes up, the cigarettes up, and threw them out. And we went back to the house. We got our car, and we're headed home. And I would have normally stopped at Ralph's Market and got some more cigarettes, but I didn't. And after three days, my my fiance said, "I haven't noticed you smoking." I said, "No, I think the Lord delivered me from it." And that's how I got by on uh, on on uh, Quicksilver with not smoking. That's probably why why you're sitting here right now.